Hello all, it's me, Andy from Blitz Gaming. Hope you're all having a great day. It's lovely and cool in the UK at this time. Today's video, part two of the Gigabyte Aorus Elite AX motherboard. We did part one of the unboxing. Now we're going to do the benchmarks of this board. So this is an AMD uh, X670 motherboard, not the E version. This is the standard version. Um, so yeah, we've got what, DDR5 obviously. Um, and we're going to take obviously VRM temperatures from the top left, the top, and the chipset. And we obviously get the uh, CPU temperatures from the software. So not on uh, camera today. I've uh, got too many things in the way because uh, I'm benchmarking um, this board uh, with the games with Arc, Intel's Arc, and the other graphic cards at this time, um, and other bits and bobs as well. So yeah, right. Let's get on with the testing and see how it comes out. It was a setup. So I've got our an AMD Ryzen 7 600 CPU, 32 gigs of Dick Kingston, 6000 megahertz DDR5, using XP profile. We've got a Corsair, ICQ, RGB, Pro XT, all in one uh, cooler, because you know it gets up to a 95C. So we need a good cooler to keep it cool. I've got a Cooler Mars 850 power supply and a thermal plate take p8 pc case very big case yeah no small jobby i've got no fans in the case except the ones on the cooler um the reason being i've got it open open air case and at this time i'm not adding no fans to it uh so just think it was an open chassis at this time okay we've got um as a setup we're using standard auto optimize setup um, on the motherboard and you see we've got 95C. Yes, this is with the 360 all-in-one water cooler. AMD said that's normal, so don't worry about it. Uh, most importantly, you can see we're still only getting 100 watts total um, at the package. And we are getting up to the 5.4 gigahertz at the processor. So that's between 5.1 and 5.4 constantly. Um, yeah, so it's getting a very good peak most of the time. And overall systems at wattage at a wall, uh, 167 watts. So, yeah, you compare it to the 13600 Gen, it's using a lot more, a lot more wattage than what we've got here. Again, with Blender, we're getting to the 90s. Uh, again, and again, we've got no problem on the clock speed, we're getting right up to the 5.4 again. Again, package wattage is around 100 watts, and at the wall, it's uh, around the 160 again. We use the old 3D Mark CPU benchmark. You can see we get top score 7197. And quickly scroll, scroll down and you can see uh, we're getting again at 5.4 gig and running about 78 80C in the temperature. So, yeah, we get a pretty good score overall with this uh, CPU. So if we look at a chart, um, Sydney Bench score, we got 14,821, 1,964 a single threaded. So yeah, Sydney Bench does well. Okay, it's not as good as the 13th gen. Um, got got to remember that has got uh, efficient cores. And we will be benchmarking that next on the list. Blender, we get a score of 233.98 after going on. And 3D Mark, we get 7,197. So you go by the VRMs, we're getting basically. Uh, so this is after like an hour of running. Um, top VRM was doing around 43. On average, on the on the on the test, um, the top left uh, was doing about 40, and the chip set was getting up to about 56. So. Or a little bit more so yeah at the end of the day the ball was cool uh running like i said we were testing uh cine bench constantly for nearly two hours so we basically run it for an hour then we done the, then they done uh the test afterwards so yeah it's about two hours of running so it got nice and warm uh, and obviously got time for the cooler 
uh, to go around the, uh, the water in the cooler to go around the cooler to go around and uh, normalize so yeah and this is the uh, temperature he's got so yeah at the end of day um, even though the CPU is getting up to 95C the board itself is staying well um, cool uh, saying so the chipset the bottom right chipset um, was obviously getting the hottest 56 it never went over really that um, on any of the tests they've done yeah so the ball's been a uh, good can't complain uh, the Cine bench score we've got uh, was good uh, according to what I run on there they're getting about 14.7 so well I've got 14.8 uh, can't complain at all so yeah um, ball's good it's well built um, like I said the next version up the master I think it's like 200 pound extra um, okay that's coming with more features and I think it's an 80 amp board not a 70 amp so yeah um, I think for basic non overclocking I mean you could overclock but You've only got 70 amps to play with, um, and the, the top range one goes up to about 100 amps, I think, if I remember rightly. Um, and again, you're paying around 700, 800 quid for that. So <laughs> you do pay lots of money for how much you, if you really want to overclock. I mean, for, for not overclocking, a ball that's stable and no problems running um, at all, everything worked fine. I want to, don't forget to update a BIOS because you won't be out. Well, I couldn't get 6,000 megahertz memory to say stable unless I update the BIOS to the latest version. So don't forget to do that. Um, so yeah, otherwise yeah, it's fine. There's no problem running. It's it's cool. Uh, can't complain. Okay, I didn't do a test on the Wi-Fi. Well, I don't really do Wi-Fi sort of stuff. I wouldn't know if it was good or bad if it did. If I did do a test, um, I just plug it in straight direct get the best contact uh, for broadband okay um, there we go I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you in the next one which will be with the uh, Intel's 1300-600K we'll be testing the old boards we had plus a lot of B boards we have now to test and see how it goes if you like the video don't forget thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't done so and I'll see you in the next one okay that is all have fun